Today's organic gardening segment deals with pest control and the second part of our control puzzle, which is mechanical control. Now mechanical control really deals with any types of practices or devices where you manually remove or prevent the insect pest coming into your crop or harming it. And also you need to know that mechanical control probably is better practiced in a smaller garden or landscape versus a larger one. Now the first mechanical practice that we want to talk about is exclusion devices. And these are basically using row covers or barriers that you cover up the plant to protect it from the insect. And it's also nice to know that these barriers sometimes can reduce wind damage and increase your soil and air temperature. And you've seen us use these in Oklahoma gardening where we plant, say like cucurbit crops, squash or cucumbers, and right after we put the seed in the soil and they begin to germinate, we cover them immediately with this row cover and it's basically like remay or a floating type row cover and we put frames to keep it up off the plant and we just keep the insects out and then when the plants are ready to pollinate we take them off so the insects can get in there and of course that means the pests are going to come in there too but at least we've had several weeks without damage and a lot of times if you can get the pest away from the plant until it's established and healthy you get a little better start. Now some other types of exclusion devices would be like paper collars wrapped around tomato plants to keep cutworms off of them, or maybe nets around, say, fruit trees to keep the birds off, or even fences such as electrical fences that we've used to keep out some of the wildlife from some of our vegetables. So exclusion devices are really left up to you as far as your creativity and how to put a barrier up to keep the pest from harming your crop. Now the second mechanical control is really one of the easiest. It's just going out and identifying your insects, finding the bad guys, especially like caterpillars, and just hand picking them and just stepping on them and getting rid of them there. And a lot of times if you're out there frequently monitoring, like we so often emphasize, you can hand pick and get things under control before they ever get away from you. Also, there's a lot of research going on in traps and attractants, and again, we've showed you some of the various types that you can use, and these are usually sticky barriers that either have a color that attracts the insect or a pheromone that attracts the insect, and then once it crawls in its um, trap, it's then caught on the sticky barrier. And again, we see a lot of the yellow paper with sticky uh, stuff painted on it to catch insects out in the garden. But Again, this isn't 100% control, but it is a good way to monitor to find out which insects you might have in the garden to start with. And then another real simple thing is using pressure sprays with water, a hand watering wand, or anything with a high pressure to just wash the insects off. And this is real good to do with spider mites because I don't like a lot of wet conditions. I like it hot and dry. And so if you can wash them off the underneath sides of the leaves, that's a good thing to do. But you have to be careful because sometimes applying a lot of water to foliage may also have an adverse effect and maybe possibly start a disease or some type of fungal problem. But again, if you keep on top of it, pressure sprays may be a way to go. Another area that is classified as mechanical is using soaps and oils. And the reason for that is that both of these products actually smother the insect or they provide a barrier so the insect can't feed on the foliage. And when we talk about soaps, there are uh, different chemical soaps out on the market that you can purchase, but they contain potassium or sodium salts of insecticidal fatty acids. And the oils are more of a petroleum-based product that also contains certain fatty acids. And again, you can purchase these products, but last year we gave you an oil and soap mixture that you could use in your garden. And let me give you that recipe again. Uh, we gave you two of them last year, but we had confusion over one, so I'm just going to give you one of them today. It's two to four tablespoons of a dishwashing soap per gallon of water, and that's a dishwashing soap that you would use in your kitchen. Then you would mix that with two to five tablespoons of vegetable oil per gallon of water. Now you'll see there's a range there and there's a purpose for that because with the range some plants if you use the higher rates you'll actually burn them especially this time of year where it's getting hot and the sun's getting bright. So let me give you some precautions. You want to use the low rates at first 
it's very important that you do that and that you test the plant or part of the plant that you're going to apply it on. For example, if we have a row of tomatoes, I would only put it on part of the tomato on one plant versus spraying the whole row right off the bat because if it's going to burn them, you could kill the entire row where you can just try certain plants. Or if you've only got one plant to spray, only try one leaf or part of the foliage. And then if it looks like it's going to be okay to use it, then you need to treat the entire plant. You need to coat the leaves, the stems, and even around the ground to control some of these insects. And you don't want to mix this with any other chemicals, only the soap and oil mix with the water. And it's usually best on soft-bodied insects, but again, be careful. And this is a recipe given to us by some of the universities and the USDA. But most importantly, you need to remember when using this recipe, again, is that you try the lower rates because, again, you can burn them. And you can only use this in your own home situation, in your own property. You can't go and do this for hire or go to your neighbors and spray, or you can't mix it up and sell it. That's when it becomes a violation of the use of that particular product. And then the last thing we want to talk about is diatomaceous earth. And it's under mechanical controls also because of the way that it affects the uh, insect. And again, it's usually on soft-bodied insects like uh, aphids. And what happens, this is just finely ground skeletons of the fossil diatome. And they have sharp edges. And once the insects either feed on it or crawl across it, it scratches their soft body parts and it causes them to dehydrate. Now, you've got to be very, very careful when using diatomaceous earth because some of the products, or many of them even, are not labeled for use on vegetables once you start getting the fruit and the foliage that you're going to consume because, as you can well imagine, those same sharp little particles may not do a human very good either when consuming. So these are just examples of mechanical type controls. And again, if you'll join us next week, we'll talk more about pest control using organic practices.